morning and thank you for attending this media conference. Uh, the Toronto Holdup Squad is uh, looking for the public's assistance in trying to identify uh, a bank robber who committed four bank robberies in a six week period commencing on the 23rd of October 2014 and ending on the 10th of November 2014 and who has been dubbed the well-dressed bandit. The individual uh, would attend a, a financial institution. Uh, in his very first robbery, he was dressed in a uh, somewhat like a suit and tie, like he just left the job interview. He approached the uh, bank uh, counter, presented a hold-up note, and produced a handgun, making a demand for cash. Uh, the uh, bank employees complied, and he fled the scene. He did this on three further occasions. Uh, on his last date, which was the 10th of November, a Monday, he committed two robberies in a similar fashion, and he has not surfaced since then. Uh, the uh, Toronto Police Hold-Up Squad have been investigating these uh, robberies since the uh, instance have occurred. We've uh, reached out to the media on a prior occasion and have had his photo put out to the public for clues or leads. Our investigative leads have dried up and we are now looking for the public's assistance one more time to try and identify this individual. He's described as a male white in his uh, late 40s to early 60s, depending on how he aged. And uh, in his first robbery, he was well-dressed with a, with a tie. And then the subsequent robberies, he was wearing hoodies and uh, winter-type jackets. He has worn sunglasses uh, in some of the robberies. And he's always carrying some type of portfolio or attache where he has the, the handgun uh, in it, which he has produced. And he produces the hold-up note from those, that location. Uh, the, the male white uh, suspect is described as also as approximately five foot ten to six foot two in height, depending on the individual's uh, description. Uh, it varies from uh, witness to witness, and with a medium build. So, uh, members of the public who identify this individual or have any information on this individual, they can contact Crime Stoppers, or they can call the co the uh, Hold Up Squad at four one six eight zero eight seventy three fifty. Also here today with me is Bill Crate from the Canadian Bankers Association, who would like to make an announcement as part of this investigation. <coughs> Bill? So thank you, Staff Inspector Mike Earl of the Toronto Hold Up Squad for inviting me here today. The Canadian Bankers Association represents 60 banks across the country uh, that employ approximately 280,000 people most of whom work at the 6,300 branches, uh, again, across the country. Robbery, as you've heard me say before, is a predatory and, uh, and very personal crime, and it's, un and it's, uh, it's unpredictability, I think, that poses the most risk and danger to people. And, and when we're talking about risk, we're talking about innocent people. We're talking about bank employees and bank customers. I have to say that uh, the banking industry truly commends law enforcement. Uh, and Crime Stoppers, they've done a great job over the years in, uh, in making these criminals accountable and reducing the number of robberies uh, in the country. And in fact, over the last 10 years, we've seen the, um, the incident of occurrences in Canada drop from 1,100 uh, to 427 last year. So you've heard uh, Staff Inspector Mike Earl talk about the well-dressed uh, bandit. Uh, today, I'm announcing a reward on behalf of Canadian banks for $10,000 for leading, leading, or sorry, for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the well-dressed bandit. It's efforts such as this, uh, this media event, and again, the good work that law enforcement uh, is doing that, uh, that aids in making um, these people accountable and deterring bank robbers. robbers. If there's one message that I'd like to leave uh, for the audience, it is if you do a bank rob robbery, uh, we will not give up until you're caught. Thank you. Bill, if you can tell us about the clearance rate uh, when you offer a reward uh, over the years, we've done many of these news conferences. Yes. How many of them are solved? Uh, last year, for example, there were 427. How many of those are solved? So um, I think it varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but certainly the average appears to be above 90%. So clearance rate by charge. Uh, speaking to your question about rewards, uh, we do uh, we offer perhaps between one and two a year. Uh, in many cases, uh, it's good police work that solves that, uh, but in some cases there have been payouts. And why in this case did you, did you decide to offer a reward? What, is, what makes this a case that you want to see done, solved? So, so Toronto Police is, have asked us to, uh, to, uh, for some help, so that's why we've offered the reward. So hopefully that'll stimulate some information. 
uh, that can aid them in a successful conclusion to these occurrences. And also from our perspective, I think it's a deterrence. It shows just how serious the banking industry takes this. One of the things I often wonder is, I know I've spoken with bank employees who have been victimized. Um, how many employees do you lose because of the, the trauma that they suffer from being in a bank when there's a robbery, especially where a gun is produced? Yeah. So, so I can't speak to that number because I don't know. Uh, but certainly there's employee assistance programs. I have to tell you, there's also a lot of front end training uh, because this happens from time to time. I mean, you could go years with, uh, working in your branch and it never happened. And then, then in, certainly in the case in the past in Vancouver, it could happen like day after day. Uh, so that does happen. I just don't have any idea what the numbers are. Well, can you speak to that assistance that you have for employees who are affected? So I, I don't want to educate the criminals. I mean, there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of front end training. And then it's like a lot of other businesses that, uh, you know, where there's some trauma or, or some other uh, major event in a person's life that, uh, that employee assistance programs are available to them. And oftentimes, uh, some of that assistance is from people that have been in those shoes already and just sharing their life experiences. Staff Inspector Earl, why did you name him brother as banker? Very seldom do we have a uh, bank robber or criminal committing an offense in a suit with a, with a tie. So that, uh, that's what dubbed him uh, from the very first robbery. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about why you named uh, rock bank robbers and what that does for the investigation or the public talk about the, these criminals? Well, when you dub them a name, it, it actually uh, rolls off the tongue. And it, uh, when tipsters phone in, it actually makes it easier to uh, sort out which, which uh, Banded, they're talking about right from the get-go. Uh, instead of trying to name uh, locations and dates of robberies, uh, most of our tips that come in from Crime Stoppers and from the public will name the actual bandit uh, as to the information they're providing on that name bandit. Staff Inspector, can you come in a little bit to the mic? Um, can you just tell us why you're concerned about this particular uh, suspect in that you wanted a reward offered? Obviously, as you said, the tips have dried up. But what is the concern with this guy? Well, mo most bank robberies are uh, are still uh, committed with notes and, and we believe that a lot of them are unarmed uh, at the time of arrest when we interview them and, and do our investigation we do learn that uh, a lot of them are not armed this individual went further and actually produced a gun or made and made a gun the, the the employees aware that he is armed and anybody that's armed with a firearm that's going into a bank or any retail business premise concerns the Toronto Police hold-up squad and concerns the police and the public I mean that's extra trauma that's put on the victims themselves and, and situations can get out of control when somebody's armed with a handgun and committing a crime. Is there any pattern to, uh, I think you did two in one day, one was four days apart, all sort of the West End, what's going on here? There was no real pattern. Uh, he, he's done, he's committed robberies at uh, three different institutions, two Royal Banks, a CIBC and a Bank of Montreal, so the, the patterns didn't yell out there. Uh, he's committed two bank robberies on a Thursday and two bank robberies on a Monday. And the, the Monday one was the, uh, uh, the two on the same day. So st commencing the 23rd of October, everything happened in a short term uh, in six weeks. So you know, I may not be far off the mark when I'm saying that maybe he uh, failed in a job interview. It could be somebody that was down and out uh, and committing his very first robbery. And six weeks of bank robberies got him through whatever he needed to get through before he moved on in his life. But somebody out there very well may have information as to who the identity of this individual is and, and he needs to be brought before justice. Or he could have another spell in his life that turns him back to doing this again, which is uh, concerning. He's from this area. Uh, I can't tell you where he's from. Uh, I could just be guessing, but. Uh, well, it, there was timing of his photo being out, but there's, there could be situations in his life that caused him to, to move in a different direction uh, for financially. And, and we've seen this in the past. I mean, uh, 35 years of policing, uh, uh, one thing in a life can, can change the direction and cause somebody to commit a criminal act. At what point did you link the robberies and at what point did you name him or his name? Well, the robberies were, were pretty well linked from, from the start from from certain pieces of the investigation, and he was named from the very first robbery. Uh, we did put his picture out to the media on a previous occasion, and it, the timing of that is consistent with the fact that he very well may have seen his picture and, and changed the direction of his crime or his direction in his life. But somebody out there, some family member, 
some coworker may very well recognize this individual and be able to uh, profit on the on the reward, or uh, they can call Crime Stoppers also. I mean, and, and help get this individual off the streets. Can you just go through again? How does he show the gun? Is it every uh, touch? It? How does it work? It's right in the, the, the on on two of the occasions he had the gun in that uh, attaché or portfolio, and on one occasion he actually had it tucked in his waist of his uh, of his waistband, and he showed the butt of the of the gun. So um, he is armed, and, the, and the, the, one of the uh, very first robberies, I believe it was, he actually pulls it right out, and we do capture it on video where the gun is pulled out of there, and he's showing the bank teller the, the uh, semi-automatic style handgun. No way of knowing if it's real, though. Obviously not, no. But I mean, I would take any firearm in this situation real until proven else. I have a question for Bill. Um, how does your organization decide how much you work to put on a case like that? So, so normally we start with ten thousand uh, dollars, and and depending on on um, additional occurrences uh, or the behavior of the uh, of the criminal, um, that will influence the size of the reward. So it's the industry; it's the uh, it's a group that makes that decision with regards to what what reward to offer. What, what is the highest? A uh, quarter of a million dollars. And when you paid up, can you give us an idea over the years? Um, yeah, I would say probably uh, maybe 25% of the war rewards get paid out. And again, um, I'm going to reflect on the good work that law enforcement does, and in particular Toronto Police, with regard, with regard to solving these cases. They truly do. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not just stroking Mike. It is good work that they do. So. So, so last year there was uh, 427. About 10 years ago there was uh, 1,100. And, and that's in the GTA. No, that's that's across the country. Oh, across. So I'll let Mike speak to uh, let Mike speak to Toronto and the GTA. I mean, there are some good trends here. Last year, uh, in the bank robberies across Canada, uh, or sorry, in 2013, there was 184 uh, bank robbery occurrences where there was some kind of weapon seen. You know, whether it's a firearm or a knife or pepper spray. Uh, and then uh, and then in 2014, that number dropped to 156. So we're, we're pleased with that trend. I mean, it's still not, uh, still not good enough, but we're going in the right direction. Inspector, quick question. Is there any concern about giving this guy a name and, you know, he's been soft for a while, that he might see this, the press and think, you know what, this, now's a good time to start doing what he was doing before, just by, you know, the celebrity aspect, if, if, you, if you understand what the question I'm trying to ask? Well, there's always a, a chance that you get people that, uh, see things on TV and in the media that gives them ideas to do things. I mean, we, we see that worldwide, right, what was going on in the world. We can't prevent that, but we still need to do our investigative steps to try and apprehend this individual. And I can't prevent uh, somebody from thinking that way or, or making steps towards reenacting his career as a bank robber again, but I can make steps towards apprehending him, and this is what I'm trying to do. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.